Okay. Uh, hello, everybody. So, uh, well, I have formal goals and goals for today. So, the formal goal or the primary formal goal is to uh, make sense of the sentence written here. So, the Kaufman bracket is a morphism from the planar algebra of unoriented frame tangles to the temporally lib planar algebra. I just need to define all the words here and then it's easy. Okay? Uh, uh, this will be the mathematical home for what we did last time. So last time I kind of said let's compute half a knot. And that seemed like a, a computational hack. But this makes it, this gives a home for it. Okay, a mathematical home for it. And uh, uh, the second informal goal is to go, oh, sorry, so people who just came in, uh, there is a handout. So actually, can you, uh, can you pass it around? I, okay. So, uh, the second informal goal is to introduce or to tell you that no theory somehow ends up leading you to study many strange mathematical structures. So, on beyond zebra, you know, uh, uh, if you've read Dr. Sue's book, so it's about. Uh, so there are the letters A, B, C, D, A is for apple, B is for boy, I don't know how it goes, uh, until Z is for zebra. But then uh, Dr. Sue recommends that we kind of allow ourselves free imagination. So there is Yaz for Yazamad, I don't remember what, and Wam for Wambi, and I don't know. Just makes up lots of um, uh, kind of extra letters. And in a, same way, in a similar way, sort of when you take yes, who is Dr. Uh, uh very famous um, children's book author. Oh. So it's a, it's a famous series of children's books. Sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, in a similar so so basically it's a children's book, but it suggests you know don't stick with the normal alphabet, go beyond. So somehow, the, 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 what I want to tell you today is, you know, there are groups, rings, fields, modules, categories. You've taken algebra classes, and each of these took a few weeks, so it became an immutable axiom, okay? A group is a group, and that's what it is. A ring is a ring, and that's what it is. And every time, every time a new structure is, intro is introduced, it's a chapter. But that's somehow uh, maybe a too rigid way to look at algebra. So um, there are structures that are intro introduced on the day because they're useful on that day. And there are many of them, and you can move, you, you can change them, you can play with them. They, they don't have to have huge theories behind them, so long as they are useful somehow. So that will be, it will be planar algebras today, and later we will have more of them. And then the last formal goal for today is to compute the rank of the temporary lib uh, 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 planar algebra in degree n to n, and find that it's given by this formula, and that's the formal rationale behind why the program we ended up writing at the end of yesterday was faster than the stupid program. Uh, but I'll have to explain this. Okay, that was a longish introduction, sorry. So, well, I... Um, uh, the Kaufman algebra is supposed to be, uh, the Kaufman bracket is supposed to be a morphism from the planar algebra of unoriented frame tangles. So let's go in some order. What are tangles? So a tangle 
uh, is, uh, well, you know, a knot is a warm, well, a knot is a, a curve in the plane, and uh, a tangle is half, a, half of a curve in half of the plane. And that reminds me of an old joke, which, you know, I, I don't know if it should be on video, you know, what's, worth, what's worse than a worm in an apple? Half a worm in half an apple. Anyway, sorry. Uh, so, uh, uh, so, uh, so what's a tangle? So instead of working in the plane, you work in a disk, and you fix the end point, so the end points cannot move, uh, and there has to be an even number of them. And then uh, in between you have uh, strands, and they can be noted like uh, in ordinary uh, uh, knot theory. Okay? And so actually what I'm drawing now is a tangle diagram, not really a tangle, right? This is a diagram of a tangle. Uh, you'll see later why I actually want the disk to have a base point. So some point on the disk is, is marked as a base point which actually means that this is sort of naturally e e e the same as a half plane. So equally well, I could have uh, you know, opened at the base point, and then I'd have a half plane and, uh, uh, and you know, some tangle o on the half plane. And then, uh, so it's the collection of these pictures modulo the usual not theoretic relations. So, Reidemeister 1, Reidemeister 2, Reidemeister 3. And just like I skipped Reidemeister's theorem, I'll skip it here. This does have a topological interpretation. So, this is knots in a ball where the endpoints of the knots are of the knot are on some fixed point on the equator of the ball. So basically thicken this to a ball, and now it's a knot embedded in the ball with the end point on end points on the equator. Uh, but again, I don't want to talk about this. Okay? Uh, okay, so I've defined tango. Now let's uh, say unoriented. So unoriented is the same, except instead of having arrows, well, you remove all the arrows. So this is now unoriented uh, tangles. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, now I have to tell you what's framed. Okay. So framed. Um, framed is actually exceedingly useful, and uh, in a way. It's so useful that when you talk about knot theory, the default should be framed knots. And when you want to talk about unframed knots, you should be saying unframed knots. Okay? So maybe we will adopt this convention. So this is the new default. Uh, all knots and tangles and all knotted objects we will, we will be talking about from this point on are uh, framed. What does framed mean? Well, I still have to define it. So framed means that instead of noting a one-dimensional line, you note a thin ribbon. Okay, so for example, well, I've done it already once, I don't need to do it again. Basically, if you take my belt and knot it, it will be a frame. You know what, I will do it again. <laughs> and I think these pants are like riskier than the previous ones. <laughs> so anyway, here is a frame knot. Okay, 
the difference between a framed knot and an unframed knot is, uh, uh, well, you see, the, a band can twist around itself a number of times before it closes up. Okay? I'll insist that it will be an integer number of times, not a half integer number of times, so that the band is orientable. Okay? Now, what is it really, the difference? It's, well, you know, let, 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 me, uh, uh, let, 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 let me write it as an exact sequence. So, uh, if you have a framed knot, or frame knots, then of course this maps to uh, the space of knots, right? And of course it's a surjective map, because uh, whenever you have a knot, you can thicken it to a little band, okay? Uh, but, so, so it's a surjective map, but uh, what's the kernel? In other words, if you have a given knot, how many different framings does it have? So the answer is, well, if it's the unknot, I can, so it's framed, meaning it's a band, and the band is somehow embedded in space, I can always take my fingers, run them through, and like push all the kinks to the very end. So, uh, uh, so basically, uh, you know, I, I can, I can uh, push all the kinks to the very end, and then all the kinks appear in, in, in one small neighborhood. And then you can count them, and that's the kernel. So the number, the kernel is the, uh, the number of kinks. Uh, so basically, it's a Z. Okay? So this is a bit loose, the notation here, because you know, you're used to this notation from group theory, uh, and, 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 and this isn't group theory, but, um, but I think you understand the meaning. So basically, any two framings of the same knot, well, I did it for the unknot, but of course I could have done it even if the overall structure was knotted, I would still. So any two framings of the same knot differ by a single integer. So, in some sense, frame knots are just a little bit more than knots, just a single integer more. So, why bother with it? Because many things are more convenient if you work with frame knots. For example, uh, hair splitting. So, you know, uh, there is an operation which uh, takes a, a knot and doubles it. So you go through every component twice, or, or, or you basically, uh, well, you double it. Okay? This operation is actually not well defined on ordinary knots, because if you just have a strand, you don't know in which direction to cut it or in which direction to move away from each other the two daughter strands, right? So this operation is not well defined. It may, might be well defined in the plane, but in R3 you just don't know in which direction to split. But for a framed knot, well, if you just go with scissors and cut the band in the middle, that defines, that, that, that makes two copies, and the two copies are again framed, because half of a band is still a band. So, uh, so, so it's for this reason that frame knots are better behaved. Okay? Uh, now, uh, uh, wait, what did I want to say? Wait, I lost my thread. Question. What? Yes? Can we maybe be specific and say, okay, let's define the splitting to just one side only? And would that still be valid? What do you mean to be just one side? Say maybe. So, so. As, as something written in the plane, mm -hmm. uh, this is well defined. 
okay? But it's not well defined in R3. In, in the plane, you could say, let's split it and put one copy on the left and one copy on the right, especially if this is oriented, okay? But you don't know, uh, uh, but in R3, I mean, so, so now I have a wire in R3. How do you know which way to put the two copies relative to each other? Right, so you have a hair, you want to split it, it's not clear in which, how to place the two copies. In fact, so for the planes there is an issue, and maybe I should, maybe I will explain the issue. So, you see, uh, this, even in the plane, splitting does not respect ridomaster moves. Specifically, it does not respect ridomaster one. So, if you have this and that, and uh, doubling this gives you that. Doubling this, let's call the doubling operation delta. So doubling this will give you, uh, uh, will give you this. And these two are not the same. If you will pull this one tight, Right? To get from here to here, you pull tight. But if you will pull this one tight, you will not get two strands, but you will get two, but instead you will get two strands that are twisted around each other. So in fact, this delta operation is not well-defined modular ridermeister moves. Okay? Uh, okay. Uh, so, so frames are better behaved. They allow this delta operation. Uh, but now, if you're talking about frame tangles, oh, oh, wait, I did want to say one more thing. So I define frame as uh, noting a little band, but an equivalent definition. So alternatively, you could say, let's take a, a knot and uh, at every point, choose a normal direction to the knot so that the normal varies continuously and, uh, sorry, not continuously, smoothly, and uh, when you come back to the initial point, you come back to the same normal. Well, technically, we're choosing a non-zero section of the uh, uh, normal bundle. So, and this choice is modulo homotopy of such choices. So basically, if you have such a choice and you, you deform it a bit, you consider it the same. Well, a choice of a normal is exactly the same as a band, right? If you, once you've chosen a normal, you can push the knot a little bit in the direction of the normal and you get a little band. And if you have a, an orientable band, you can choose one of its sides and call it the knot, and then uh, uh, let the perpendicular, there, let, let the arrow going to the other side be, and call it the, 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 the frame, the normal. Okay? So, so these are two different ways of saying the same thing. Anyway, so what are framed uh, knots? Uh, so, uh, uh, so framed knots are, you know, now I want a planar picture for framed knots. So framed knots are uh, planar diagrams right, once you have a planar diagram you have a canonical framing, namely uh, you look at the perpendicular turning going to the right in the plane. Okay? So planar diagrams automatically have a framing. Okay? Uh, but uh, uh, the set of moves is different. So you still mod out by Ridermeister 2 and Ridermeister 3. But as in the picture here, but you just have it to read it differently. So here I wrote it, read it as a picture for doubling, but you can read it as a picture for framing, the canonical framing. 
an unframed strand become the, becomes a framed one. So um, the canonical framing does not respect Rademeister 1. Uh, so you do not move mod out by Rademeister 1. Okay? Except uh, uh, there is something else that, 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 that it does respect. So basically, if you have uh, two kings uh, going the opposite direction, then uh, this is equivalent to that. And you can check it, you know, if you don't believe me, take your own belt or whatever, your own, your own ribbon, whichever one you have, uh, make this picture from it, pull it tight, and you'll see that it's the same as that with no twists. Uh, so instead of Rydermeister 1, you have, I don't know, let's call it Rydermeister 1 prime. Okay? Yes? Do you mean the, the band or just the... That's you, what you've drawn? This? The, yeah, the single so string. So if you thicken it to a band, mm -hmm. this okay. band is actually equivalent to that one. Okay. And again, if you don't believe me, make it, uh, make it from actual band and pull it tight and you'll see that they're the same. Okay? Uh, okay, so now I can define uh, framed unoriented tangles. So framed uh, unoriented uh, tangles will be uh, pictures in the plane. So pictures like this, sorry, with crossings. Modulo, uh, Rydermeister 1 prime, Rydermeister 2, and Rydermeister 3. Okay? Okay, uh, that's been the boring part. Now we've defined, uh, 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 okay, we've defined uh, unoriented frame tangles, but now I need to tell you what's a planar algebra. Okay? So, uh, uh, what's a planar algebra? So, uh, planar algebra. So, let me say it uh, first of all very, very loosely and then more formally. Okay, uh, so, uh, uh, a pla oh, by the way, sorry, I, maybe I should have said it. Uh, when I talk about planar, planar, uh, the planar algebra of tangles, I allow closed components. So there might be components that are inside and don't touch the boundary. Good. So what's a planar algebra? The easiest way to, ima to think about it is it is that algebraic structures that algebraic structure that tangles are an example of. Okay? Kind of like saying, what's a group? A group is that algebraic structure that uh, the permutation group is an example of. Of course, it's a loose definition. It's, it's not a precise definition. Uh, so now let's make it more precise. So uh, a planar algebra is, uh, let's see, it's a collection of spaces, a collection uh, of spaces, I should be saying sets. Okay, but you know, there, you, you could be talking about linear planar algebras and then the spaces will be vector spaces. Okay, but uh, a collection of sets, uh, let's, it, let's call it Pn, uh, where n uh, is an integer uh, greater than or equal to zero. And you should be thinking of Pn as tangles with n ends. So, uh, for example, uh, Pn could be uh, 
uh, tangles with two end ends, uh, sorry, uh, sorry, tangles with n ends if n is even, and the empty set if n is odd, because a tangle will always have an even number of ends. Okay? But in general, it could be any collection of sets. So by the way, when you're talking about the group, it's a single collection. When you're talking about the vector space, in some sense, it's two collections, right? The, the, the field and the space, and the vector space. So in a, in a planar algebra, you have objects of different types, where the type is indexed by an integer. OK? Then you have a collection of operations. Uh, uh, so operations. But you see, in a group, you have one operation. In a ring, you have two operations. In a planar algebra, you have as many operations as you can put to get, put tangles side by side next to each other in the plane. So what does it mean? So the operations uh, are one for each, uh, what should we call it, a planar connection uh, diagrams one for each planar connection diagram. And what's a planar connection diagram? So a planar connection diagram is a circle with a number of smaller circles marked inside. So, so far it's like a Swiss cheese, and then we annotate it a bit. So with lines, connecting with, with a planar connection collection of lines connect you know let me use a different color for these lines sorry so with a planar collection of lines connecting these uh, a planar network of lines connecting these uh, uh, this is inner circles to the outer circle, but I should have said that lines could also go from an inner circle to itself, or between two inner circles, or from an outer circle for it to itself, and in fact they could also uh, be floating. Okay? Uh, that's a planar connection diagram. Sorry, not quite. Each of the internal circles must have a base point. So the base point could be at different points in each one, or well, not necessarily different points. And the outer circle also has a base point. And furthermore, the inner circles are numbered. So this is number one, this is number two, this is number three, or maybe they're numbered in some other way. So. This is supposed to index the set of operations. So this should be an operation. Uh, what operation is it? So this is an operation from a product of three P spaces. So P cross P cross P into a single P space. Which P space? So the first argument corresponds to the number one hole. And the number one hole has one, two, three, four ends. So this is an operation from P4 cross. The number two hole has one, two, three, four ends also. So cross P4. Uh, and then the number three inputs has, input has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight ends. So cross P8 into um, so uh, now I need to count the red things on the outside. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. That doesn't make sense. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. The second be... one has 5, doesn't it? What? Oh, the second yeah. one has 5. Okay, sorry. Uh, okay, yes. 
Well, you know, it's, it's, when you have a PhD in mathematics, one good thing is that you learn to count. <laughs> I didn't. So. Okay, anyway. Uh, now, I said nothing so far. I said these are the, op I need to have operations like this. Uh, but how does it fit in the case of tangles? Yes? Yes, uh, I'm kind of wondering how you, you, you were able to tell that it didn't make sense. Sorry? I'm kind of wondering how you, uh, you got to know that it didn't make sense. How I got what? How you got to know that it didn't make sense when you counted 11 outward. Oh, how I knew it didn't make sense? Yeah. Because if all of the inner one had even numbers, the outer one will have an even number too. I see, okay. Uh, but, uh, but then I got uh, eight, five, sorry, four, four, eight, and, and, ele and, and 11, that just, okay? Okay. Anyway, uh, so how, what are these operations in the case of tangles? It's kind of obvious. So if you have three input tangles, one tangle with four ends, one tangle with five ends, ignore for a moment the fact that such things do not exist, okay? And another uh, tangle with eight ends, you'll take the first one and put it here, the second one and put it here, the third one and, and put it there. So, you know, this will become some tangle, this will be replaced by some uh, tangle, and that one will be replaced by some tangle, but this one I will not draw, because it doesn't exist. And then you just got a bigger tangle altogether. This was the composition of the three smaller tangles into a big one. Okay? Uh, 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 oh, and here is, that's where I needed these base points. So basically, uh, if you have a tangle, I need to tell you how to put it in here. And there is a 2 pi choice of how to put it in. Or, or basically, not 2 pi, basically a cyclic choice depending on how many ends there are. So you put it, put it in so that it clicks, so that the notch agrees with the base point. Okay? So that makes it well defined. Okay? And then there is a condition. So, you know, with group theory, the condition is associativity. Okay, I mean, there is a collection of things, an operation, and the condition is associativity, maybe other conditions as well. Okay? But there is also a condition here. So, three such that associativity uh, holds. But associativity is a different matter here. And uh, I don't think I want to write it in full because it's extremely painful. But I'll write it, I'll write it as an example. Okay? So basically, uh, suppose uh, you have uh, uh, Okay, uh, so you have three P spaces, three is an arbitrary number here, uh, but you know, let me write them in an order that will be more uh, uh, agreeable to what I'm going to do. So, uh, you can uh, uh, compose the first two by taking some operation that takes this p and puts it here, and this p and puts it here. And now you get two p spaces. And then you can compose them by some operation that, uh, uh, that uh, well, that puts them on top of each other. And again, I'm, I'm failing to write the, pla the actual planar connection diagram because I'm lazy. Okay? Uh, uh, so this will give you an output in a single P space. But I could have composed these circles. Namely, I could have put, put this mask inside the upper eye 
of this uh, cyclop. I don't know, it's not a cyclop, sorry, this funny creature, okay? So I get a single operation that looks like this. Where really, uh, uh, well, I, it's not visible, the, the, the color, uh, maybe I'll choose blue. Where really, uh, this part is that, and the complement of blue is that. Okay? And of course, if I had red lines, I would just copy them. Uh, so this is a single operation that takes three inputs and produces a single output. And I want these, the upper line, I want this diagram to commute. Okay? Of course, I could write it in great detail. You'd hate me forever. <laughs> okay? So I will not. Uh, okay, that's the end of the definition. Examples. Well, the example was cooked, sorry, the, the definition was cooked, so that tangles will be an example. So, but unoriented tangles, because in, if the tangle was oriented, you'd have to, uh, then, then, then you'd have to, these arrows would have to be oriented as well. So in fact, I could go back and redefine planar algebra to be, well, I could redefine directed planar algebras. A directed planar algebra would be the same, except that instead of like having P4, so having four ends, you have P uh, out, out, in, in. Or basically you'll have a labeling of which, which, points, uh, which points goes in and which points goes out. Okay? Uh, but that's not what I want to do. Instead, I want to talk about unoriented tangles. If they're unoriented, if, if the tangles are unoriented, then, uh, then this definition applies. So, unoriented tangles make an example. And, you know, if you want, you can add the word frame, but if you don't want, you don't have to. Both are an example. Two, um, uh, so, uh, um, uh, oh yes, yeah, sorry, two, uh, so take a finite dimensional vector space, so let uh, V be a finite dimensional vector space with a metric on it, with an inner product. Okay? Uh, with uh, uh, an inner product. Uh, inner uh, product. Uh, uh, and let uh, Pn be this vector space, vector space raised to the nth power. Okay? Uh, so now, I, well, I told you what is the collection of sets. Now I need to tell you what is the operation. So uh, maybe I'll just do it by an example. So uh, let me explain the operation uh, this operation, okay? Uh, where this is uh, one, this is two. So this is an operation. It should go from V tensor to the four uh, times V tensor cubed, V tensor cubed, and it should have an output in V tensor cubed. V uh, tensor cubed. Okay? Furthermore, uh, the, the, the tensor factors here are labeled. So, you see, uh, if the base point is one, I'll call this one the first tensor factor, this one the second, this one the third, this one the fourth. And if the base point is here, 
I'll call uh, this tensor factor, uh, sorry, this tensor factor one, two, and three. So suppose you give me an element which lives in V tensor to, to the fourth. Uh, what does it look like? It looks like a sum of uh, things of the form uh, U1 tensor, U2 tensor, U3 tensor, U4. So this is, it's a sum, I'm, I'm not even bothering to indicate the indexing set, but you have, okay? And then you have an element here, so it's a sum of W1 tensor, W2 tensor, W3. So what will I map it to? Well, two of the first factor is paired with three of the second factor. So I take this and pair it with that. And uh, three of the first factor is paired with two of the second fa factor. So this is paired with that. And what does pair mean? It means uh, you take the inner product of this with, of, of, a, of a thing with its pair. So this will go to the inner product of uh, u2 with w3 times the inner product of u3 with w2 times all the rest are exported. So uh, I, I actually need to tell you what is the base point. So say this is the base point. So uh, the tensor factors are numbered 1, 2, and 3. So the first tensor factor of the output is the first one of the Ws. So times W1 tensor. The second one is the fourth of the Us. So U4 times uh, U1. OK? So again, I mean, I didn't make it formal, but I think it's completely clear. Basically, here you have a bunch of vectors, here you have a bunch of vectors, you pair the vectors that are attached by a line, and you export the, the remaining ones. Okay, is it clear? Good, uh, and you can check the axioms on your spare time, and I am, whoo, slow. No, I'm not slow. I mean, this is just a lot of things to go through. Uh, I still need to give you one last example. So uh, the last example is nearly a universal example. So example number three, uh, the temporary Lib algebra uh, with uh, n outputs. So these are uh, planar, planar uh, connection uh, diagrams with uh, no inputs. Uh, sorry, linear combinations of such. So allow yourself to take linear combinations of such. Modulo a little relation. So what do I mean? So uh, an element of TL4 will be a planar connection diagram with no inputs. What's a planar connection with that diagram with no inputs? It's just, where's the red chalk? I don't know. Uh, we'll, oh, here it is will be an output circle with no input circles. So the only thing you have are lines like this and a base point. OK? So you take linear combination of things like this. Uh, but remember also that you're allowed circles, allowed, uh, allowed to have internal circles. And in fact, you, you must allow internal circles. Because even if you didn't have internal circles to start with, when you compose two things, you may get an internal circle. 
Okay? So take this modulo the relation that an internal circle is equal to some constant d. And that's the, plan the temporary Lie algebra. Okay? So, uh, I don't know what to do first, uh, uh, this or that. Let's finish this. Okay? Claim, uh, claim, uh, uh, you know, here I, re you know what, here I should have been more precise. I mean, this is some over some, so the temporary lib algebra over some ring is you take linear combinations with coefficients in that ring. Okay? And D is some element of the ring. Okay, so D uh, is some element of the ring. Uh, and in fact, uh, if I don't indicate the ring, so uh, with TLN without a ring indicated, being TLN of the ring uh, Z uh, with A uh, Laurent polynomials in, 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 in A, uh, and with D equals to uh, negative a squared negative a to the negative 2. So with this definition of TLN, the Kaufman bracket, the Kaufman bracket is a morphism from TN, so this is unoriented framed, sorry, I shouldn't put the N here. It's a morphism from uh, unoriented framed tangles to uh, the temporary lead algebra. Okay? So uh, this is a morphism of uh, planar algebras. Now, um, what's a morphism of planar algebras? Well, you know, I never told you that. But you're adults, you can figure it out on your own. Right, so a morphism of group is you map group elements to group, uh, or is one group to one to group element in one group, in the other group. So, uh, for, uh, in such a way that, that it's compatible with the operations. So, I mean exactly the same. But here, since there are groups, so since there are elements of different types, so n indicates the type. I want the bracket to preserve the type. I want the morphism to preserve the type. So in other words, uh, it's a collection of maps which goes from Tn into Tln in such a way that it's compatible with the operations. And this I don't need to write. This is the same as the old thing. Uh, anyway, proof. That. There is nothing to prove. The definition of the Kaufman bracket, okay. Strictly speaking, I first need to define it. But the Kaufman bracket clearly does that. Okay? Clearly uh, maps a tongue, basically, it maps a thing that has crossings to something without crossings. Something without crossings is exactly an element of the temporary Lie algebra. Once we have uh, uh, set D equals to that, uh, it satisfies the Rydermeister rules, and you can check that it satisfies the Rydermeister 1 prime. It doesn't satisfy Rydermeister 1, but it does satisfy Rydermeister 1 prime, because one king will contribute an A cubed, and the other, uh, king, the other king will contribute an A to the negative 3. So uh, the bracket does go this way, and the fact that it's compatible with the planar algebra operations is basically the fact that it's local. So uh, whatever you do here doesn't influence what you do there. In both cases, you, you, you smooth all the crossings, but you can do it in either way you want, any of the ways you want. Uh, 
Yeah, so that was a very, very long lecture at the end of which I said practically nothing. Right? I just constructed the framework in which you can talk about half knots. Okay? Um, uh, and I didn't yet show the rank business, and I didn't yet finish everything. Well, you know, we still have uh, most of the semester to go. So see you on Wednesday. Questions, comments? Yes. Um, so, Ita. Yes. Yes. Uh, so, I thought the Kaufman bracket like outputted a, a Laurent polynomial. How do you like? Oh. Also tie it to the. Oh. Diagram? So so uh, on a on a closed knot. So a knot is a tangle with no inputs and outputs. Mm -hmm. Sorry, with no outputs. With no. Uh, so, 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 that would, so a knot will be an element of T0. Okay. The output will be an element of TL0. Right. TL0, so that's a good point. So what is TL0? So TL0 is planar connection diagrams with nothing, no inputs, and no red strands. So basically it's a single thing. It's a one dimension, well actually, no, because it's allowed to have uh, internal circles, but you mod out by uh, the internal circle is equal to D. So really, it's a, a rank one space, right? a one-dimensional thing. The coefficient of this one-dimensional thing is the, the Jones polynomial. The, sorry, the Kaufman bracket. Mm -hmm. OK? Good, good point. So yes, yeah, strictly speaking, the Kaufman bracket is uh, maps a knot, which is considered as a tangle, not to a Laurent polynomial, but to a Laurent polynomial times an empty circle with a base point on it. Mm -hmm. OK. Anything, other questions? Yes, Adria. So, did you say that um, the temp elements of the temporally leave algebra um, don't have crossings? Yes. Okay. So, they are planar connection diagrams. In a, pla in, in a planar algebra, the connections don't have crossings. Okay. 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 Uh, okay. So, see you on Wednesday. <laughs>